I'll bet viewers that when you started this journey, you did not expect by 10 episodes or so in that you'd get to watch a fat ginger man doing arts and crafts. But here we are. Episode 15 to 20 is going to be passed on finger painting. So stay tuned. Okay, so we're now on the lower wishbones here and I've decided to get a bit adventurous in the way I do things. So this is our lower ball joint which we're going to use, this is a standard MX5 thoroughfare, so nothing too drastic from the departure list. This here you'll note is my wishbone arm and I've already welded this onto here. Rather than make a jig like we did with the uppers, I thought let's get a bit adventurous, let's just do this stage by stage. Female plate to give you the standoff because this is obviously 25 mil and that's 30 odd something so stick that on there and then on a flat surface onto which you attach that that'll give you the height and then when you come to weld that on using your angle tool set to 70 degrees we stand off to clear this allows you to set it to exactly 70 mil 70 degrees fucking 70 mil yeah and then that allows you to weld it so once that's in place and welded up, I've done the two of them and that gives you something that looks like this. Now, with the two of them in place, you can then set 345mm gap. That is the distance apart these two need to be. And now we can look at the front. I've cut a slot in this one. Into that slot will slide this. This will be the lower plate that the shock absorber will go onto. So that will slot into here and then all of our happy fun and joy is on here. That is where we're at at the moment. So I'm about to cut this other slot in so we can actually put this in place and start tacking it up. Now, how did I get the slot cut perfectly straight and accurate? That's also a good question. Thanks for asking guys. We know this bar to be 25 mil. We know this bar to be 25 mil as well. So, if we were to take the distance between 25 and 25, which is 32 and a half, no, 37 and a half, me, and then set it up on this, that will give us a standoff, so that when we put this in, and make sure it's perfectly straight with this level, we can scribe the height, and that will give us a line to cut. Now this line needs to be three mil. Your cutting discs are one mil, so what I did was with the cutting disc, just start running at angles, but keeping the disc line straight against the face of this, so that I'm not cutting, we're just cutting like that. And that gives us a bit of width. That is all you need to do. Do you know what would warm you up? A bottle. Make one of these. Oh no, what is this? So that's the bottom plate for the front wishbones. Bottom plate's the front wishbones? Where does this fit? On the front wishbone. So I've made one, and I'm, I feel like I need to be Tony Stark here, and now that I've made my Mark 1, I can just get Jarvis to make the thing. The right. Jar you, you do that, Jarvis, and I'll go and um, find the wee blonde thing at a ball with a black tie on. And You've got it. Welcome on board the 1330 service to making a colossal arse of a cut. Please equip yourself with ear and eye protection and keep all limbs within the vehicle at all times or they might get cut off.
Okay guys, that is all of our raw materials cut out and prepared for welding. The next step is we're going to tack all this together, get our measurements right, and then go for a full-blown weld-a-thon. Now, to get it tacked together, we're going to use the ball joint to be the source of location. As you probably guessed, it's going to be the most accurate thing to use. Now, while I'm putting this together, I have a confession to make. Earlier on in this episode, I gave you an absolute bum steer. I told you you would need to notch these two arms, the one inch tube section, to slot this guy into place. That wasn't strictly speaking true. Or to be more accurate, it was a load of absolute f***ing shit. What we'll need to do is cut these to clear so that they can mate to these two surfaces. I've not buggered anything up by putting a notch into it, but you just don't need to do it. So don't. There is a good point about this uh, giving you a bum steer. I could quite easily have edited out all of that chat at the start and said no more about it. If you do not read the manual and go eight steps ahead, you're going to make problems for yourself. A bit like I just did. Now I assumed that we would need a notch in that to clear that plate, but we don't. That didn't cause me problems, but other ones will. You do have to think about eight steps ahead. And if you're doing a work piece like an entire wishbone, you need to plan all this out in your head, otherwise you're going to end up buggering something up. This is already starting to look bitching. And I am getting excited. Not just because it looks good, but because I get to do a massive big welder fun. And if you haven't already guessed, I'm starting to enjoy my big, great big welder funs. You probably aren't. You're probably sick to the back teeth of seeing them by this point. I guess I watched a lot of A-Team when I was younger. Who didn't enjoy seeing Mr. T hitting fools left, right and centre, and welding up some doomsday device to defeat, but fundamentally not kill a single person. The bottom ball joint is going to form a fundamental locating point in this. And I'm going to want it in place because when we weld all this, no matter how accurately I measure it all, if it doesn't fit the ball joint, we're tushed. So I'm going to tack it all in place with the ball joint first, and then we'll weld it properly there. We've got two slats coming out the side here. They're for strength. Now, yes, the weld will be nice and strong, and we'll seam weld it, but there's nothing quite like having metal through metal to begin with to add strength. As you can see, there is no moving that and it's going to take a lot of load. Adding welds when it's already through there is only going to put more strength in it. And as these are lower wishbones, we want that. I need to do one last thing here. I know that to that and that is perfectly bang on what it needs to be. As you can see, there's a chance for this to have moved. So all I'm going to do is get my 90 degree and check this is square before we start welding. Now that that's in place, you need to weld it all. And then once that's welded, you need to attach it to the two arms. Let's make some bright lights. Good. Now that we have laid siege to this, laid siege, because it's under attack, we can now start the almighty weldathon. I'm going to flatten these back and do big seam welds over each side so that it's nice and strong. And then once I've seam welded, it'll flatten it again. And that'll give us a mating surface to tie in both of these tubes into. So, let's weld.
So he didn't honestly think we were going to get to the end of this episode without him to do another whiteboard measurement session, did you? What we've got so far is this and this has been welded together and we've got the degree right. Same for this and this. Also, we've managed to get all these plate parts welded together as well. The one thing that remains is we've got to get the two tubes welded onto the plate. Now, that would, you think would be fairly simple. Just chop these at an angle, chop the plate in and weld it. However, if this plate sits off, it's going to bugger up the caster. The top wishbones that we did in the previous episode, they're fixed for caster and they're welded in accurately. Similarly, the bottom ones will have to be the same because if that caster's off, well, it's not gonna be fun, put it that way. So what we need to make sure is that this all gets chopped and welded in exactly correct. As in the previous episode, we're gonna to have to put the measurements on and then extrapolate a few more measurements to make sure we've got our center line projection. And to do that, it looks a little bit like this. There we go. Right, now I've not went daft on the measurements this time because we don't actually need a lot of them. I have projected a center line and then I've took everything from a center line because that's going to be my datum across all of this. Now, why have I not went mental? I've had a look, I've, I've really dug through all these and I was wondering why it was so spartan on measurements. It's because it's symmetrical. These are actually identical across this center line up and down. So that saves a lot of hassle and a lot of thought. So what we're gonna do is, we're gonna use this center line to make sure that this it's placed in level to where it needs to be. The total width of this is 345 millimeters. Divide that by two, my center line to the end should be 172.5 millimeters. Now, the width that, the, that this plate arrangement that we made up is 67 millimeters. I think that's actually slightly different from where the book is, probably because of variances of metal from where I welded it in, and possibly because the ball joint I'm using might be slightly wider. Now, I'm not gonna get hung up making it look like the book, because at the end of the day, my car needs to work, even if it's different from the book. Therefore, 67 millimeters is gonna be my width. Divide that by two, that's 33 and a half. So from my center line, this must be perfectly 33 and a half millimeters up and down. My double check for this, because you always need to put a double check in, is that that center line that's 33 and a half up must also be 139 millimeters down from the outer edge of where the bush attaches. That makes sense? No, me neither. But How you make a wishbone. Not too bad. Well, a lower wishbone, I should stipulate. That's all the welding done. And as you can see, God, I wish I could keep this colour. <laughs> this mad sort of heat tracing that you get. It's a shame. This will need to be painted, obviously, so that's not going to last forever. Um, in the coming episodes, once we work out what we're doing with suspension, there'll still be a bracket that needs to go on here. Uh, obviously, this will also be painted, and then we'll chuck the bushes in and throw on the car. However, for the moment, that's as far as we're going to go with this. Thanks for everyone for watching. Thanks everyone for doing the Patreon thing. You guys keep us in welding gas and keep this gear turning. So we appreciate the help. If you've not done it already, patreon.com slash tools and track. In the next episode, I don't know what we're doing. Christ, probably make more of this. There are, as you've probably guessed, a good amount of things that go on in the background. We've only been showing you how to do one of these, but we'll need to double up everything we do, add gussets, all that sort of jazz. That's going to start being broadcast. It's not very interesting for an episode, but some folk may actually like to see all of that process and the hours and hours that it takes. If that's you, you want to be going over to twitch.com slash tools and track. We've got a page on there and we're going to start doing live streaming and I'm going to hook some Wi-Fi up in here and um, just show you all the many hours of not particularly episode worthy pain that goes into this. We'll be back with more Weldy Sparky Grindy fun. See you later guys, thanks for watching. Spare. What? This. I mean, it's as spare as it needs to be. What, what are you thinking? I think I'm building a shelf so that I can have more storage space because there's just not enough. Like four legs and a table top.
Well, I mean, we are running out of content to work with. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Tools and Track. Today we do monotonous shite that was previously instructed to you by a man who was usually an alcoholic and wanted to your school kids, i.e. your woodwork teacher. Looks a little bit like that. <laughs> roger, roger. Geeks and me will get that. I only see Jen up because uh, our friend Boss Hog loves the expression. Yeah, I love this young person chat. Do you play the PlayStation? I've been f***ing saying Jen up for f***ing years. Oh, okay, season 3 is my life crisis, hence the turbocharged V8 TVR, and the uh, kit car, and the motorbike that made an appearance for a while. Just humour him, and give him a bovril, and he'll be happy. Ladies and gentlemen, can I have your attention please? I have a very important announcement to make. When you strip these lower ball joints off of your donor MX-5, do bend them, because there's a pretty good chance that they will be fucked. However, don't be too enthusiastic when you're building the bolts. This is not a normal thread. You will have to go onto eBay and buy an M12 fine, or is that an M10? But it's a fine metric thread that holds this retaining bolt in the bottom and it's a pain in the arse and because it's a fine thread, ridiculously expensive to buy a bolt for. Live and learn, 